We shall be talking about ethylene glycol toxicity. A lot of students understand the causes of acidosis, but one of the common causes of metabolic acidosis is ethylene glycol. Now, ethylene glycol can be found in automobile coolants or antifreeze. So these are patients that basically, they are alcohol abusers, but then they start to binge drink on antifreeze. Please do not ever do that, all right? Now, also it can be found in solvents or de-icers. So in order to understand how ethylene glycol really causes metabolic acidosis, let's take a look at the pathway by which ethylene glycol is metabolized in the body. So here's ethylene glycol, which is broken down into glycohaldehyde by alcohol dehydrogenase. Now, once glycohaldehyde is made, the byproduct of that is glycolic acid. As you can see, glycolic acid is what actually causes anion gap metabolic acidosis, which basically means the patient's pH is going to be low, right? Less than 7.3. Also, their bicarb is going to be low. It's going to be less than 24. In this case, let's say it's 10. So they have metabolic acidosis and they're going to have an anion gap metabolic acidosis. However, this glycolic acid is actually broken down into glyoxalic glyc acid, which is further actually broken down by in the presence of thiamine, which is vitamin B1, into alpha hydroxy beta keto adipate. Also, in the presence of pyridoxine, which is vitamin B6, this glyoxalic acid is converted to glycine. So we have two vitamins that's actually responsible in between the pathways as we are breaking down ethylene glycol. Now, glyoxalic acid is now going to form oxalic acid. That oxalic acid is going to bind to the calcium inside the bloodstream to form calcium oxalate. Now, this calcium oxalate is going to go and deposit into the renal tubules to cause renal tubal necrosis. So this is what causes renal failure in patients that have ethylene glycol toxicity. Not only do they develop acute renal failure, which means that BUN and creatinine is going to be elevated, right? It's going to be pre-renal uh, fa failure. They're going to develop hypocalcemia, right? Because all the calcium is being bound by the oxalic acid, dropping their calcium concentration inside the bloodstream, causing them to become hypocalcemic. So it is, they got anion gap metabolic acidosis. They develop hypocalcemia, renal tubular necrosis, and last but not the least, in order to actually treat this patient, you have to give them an antidote known as fomepazole. Fomepazole is an alcohol dehydrogenase inhibitor. It blocks this pathway and basically prevents the breakdown byproducts of ethylene glycol into its constituents. Also, if you don't have fomepazole, you can treat your patient with ethanol because it's basically this is the rate limiting step of this biochemical pathway for this patient. If you give them ethanol, it's going to compete for that alcohol dehydrogenase so that this alcohol dehydrogenase is going to work on ethanol to convert it into alde uh, aldehyde, okay? which is going to break down the alcohol down in the body. Okay? And this is how we treat toxicity of ethylene glycol. Remember, it's, the mo it's one of the common causes of anion gap metabolic acidosis. Very, very simple. Also, you require thiamine and pyridoxine supplements in patients that actually have eth uh, ethylene glycol toxicity, so it can also help in their breakdown of their byproduct to glycine and alpha hydroxy beta keto adipate. And that brings us to the end of our lecture. If you really enjoyed this video on ethylene glycol toxicity, please feel free to visit our website, smashusmle.com, to watch more USMLE and complex high yield videos to be able to succeed on the boards. Thank you, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Bye bye. Hey, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you learned a lot. Are you studying for the USMLE Step 1 or Step 2? Are you studying for the NCLEX or you're currently in nursing school as a nursing student? Are you a PA student currently in school or studying for your PANS exam? Or are you a nurse practitioner student or trying to take your MP board exam? Listen, I've got super awesome content for you. If you truly love this video and it simplified your learning process, 
I want you to check out my website below. I've listed all the list of exams, whether you're studying for any of this board exam, and all I want you to do is click on the link right now below so that you can take you directly to my website. For USMLE, just go to smashusmle.com. For NCLEX, go to crushnclex.com. And if you're studying for the PANS exam, the nurse practitioner exam, or you're studying for your internal medicine board exam, just click below and it'll take you directly to ftplectures.com. Listen, I can't wait to help you. If you need to get in touch with me, just get to my website, you're able to reach me directly, and we can work together one-on-one. -on -one. Listen, you are super awesome, and my goal here is to help your dream come true. If you wanna be a doctor, wanna be a nurse practitioner, a registered nurse or physician assistant, I'm here to help you get to that next level. With your medical knowledge, let's save the world together. I love you guys. You guys are super awesome. And do not forget to click on the link below to be able to get to my website. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You guys have a great day.